Welcome in to the Lucas and Lucas podcast. Lucas Franco alongside Mike Lucas, where Nick Chubb done for the season. Second quarter of the second game in week two against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday night. One of the most gruesome injuries you'll ever see on a football field. Uh, we were watching the truck feed at work, so they didn't. I don't believe they showed the the angles not. that I saw as many times to the national public. But man, that was seeing how his knee just bent and did things that a normal knee is not supposed to do was extremely uh, hard for me to watch and made me very queasy. Um, you knew instantly it was not, nah, he's not going to ever going to be playing again this season. And who knows what his future holds as a football player in the NFL, because this is not his first rodeo going through a gruesome knee injury. He had a similar one in college. I remember that one vividly because his knee like curved, his leg was like bent. I remember in a way that legs aren't supposed to bend. Um, so very concerning for Nick Chubb. Like, what was your old take on the situation? And do you foresee Nick Chubb playing football at a productive level again? I'll start with the second question and work my way back. He's 28. The running back cliff is 29, 30. So he's right in that range already. The Browns can get out of his contract. I think he's played his last down as a Cleveland Brown, which is pretty disheartening because he has been the constant in chaos in Cleveland for the last six, seven years, I guess five, six years, he was drafted in 2018. And they've had coaching changes. They've had quarterback changes. They've had offensive coordinator changes. What hasn't changed is the fact that 24 has been one of the best running backs, not just in the modern NFL, but in the history of the NFL. And when push came to shove, even through some really tough, depressing seasons in Cleveland, Nick Chubb was putting up monster numbers. He doesn't speak. He never gets in trouble. He is the epitome of what you want your superstar to be on and off the field. And to see him go down like that last night, to see the reactions of his teammates, to see how the Steelers fans and the Steelers players, who there's a lot of trash talk this week between the two cities and their fan bases, to see them react in the way they did, realizing this wasn't your prototypical football injury. This was a little more, uh, kind of puts it into perspective. And as someone who works in Cleveland now, I'm, I'm less than a mile from Cleveland Brown Stadium. I'm looking at it as we speak. You know, expectations for this team after week one could not have been higher. Like we had people in the city, like prominent people in the city saying this is a Super Bowl caliber team. Oh, come on. Like, and that is without, that, that's just ridiculous. No, no, I'm just, I'm just giving you the context of what's happening. People in Cleveland, not me, but people in Cleveland talk about this team being Super Bowl caliber. But if Deshaun Watson any, any, back and any see, city, hold, any hold city on, on. after week one, you get the overreactions, but continue. Go ahead. I, I get, I get that. But the defense looked phenomenal that we knew the running game would be good because Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb. And to see him go out like that, was not just a gut punch to the team last night, but it frankly was a giant gut punch, a Mike Le- Mike Tyson style gut punch to the overall outlook of the season. What makes it even worse, and I know this is a topic you want to get to next, is Deshaun Watson's looked like absolute dog crap in his first eight games as a Brown. So, you know, it doesn't help that last night in the game against Pittsburgh, they only needed a minuscule effort from Deshaun Watson to win that game, and, and he did not produce. That's disheartening, but to do it after losing Nick Chubb when your quarterback, your leader, the guy that you're paying $230 million to, the guy who you traded three picks for because you thought he was the guy that could win you these types of games was unable to come through for. So it, it sucked, man. And we we spent 25, 30 minutes on the show today talking about Nick Chubb, what he means to the city, what he's meant to this franchise. The dude has literally never done anything wrong in the city of Cleveland since he's been a member of the Browns. And to see him get carted off the field like that, it just sucks. Like, it, it's part of football. I understand it happens, but it sucks to see it. And it, it's similar to the Aaron Rodgers thing last week. Wait, what happened to Aaron Rodgers? When popped his Achilles. Oh, he's Four plays into the season, the, the wind oh. kind of comes out of your sail as a Jets fan. Oh, I, didn't, I, I didn't even know what happened there. Anyway, uh, so this is my take on the whole – I can't believe I actually Chubb... answered that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Chubb me. thing – the Chubb thing essentially validates the whole running back stance that's, that these teams had over the offseason. Why they're and Saquon, so Bar- fun- Saquon Barkley, too, by the way. Who I right, will see if he ends up playing on Thursday. But Not like sure. you see all these guys, why should we give you these contracts? Because one hit and you're done. Like one, all, all it takes is one hit. And anytime running backs got the ball in their hands, they're going to get hit. And you know, their foot gets twisted weird. Their knee gets twisted weird. They get hit in a spot that they're not supposed to get hit. Like, 
it ends like that. Like mm-hmm. blink of an eye, season gone or over for the player. Let me, let me ask you this. You you were with people you work with at CBS. I'm not sure if you guys had any former players on the show today or you talked to any. Did you think the hit was dirty? Um, Honestly, I have to watch it again. I, to me, it looked like a standard tackle. Um, I, I'm Google. I'm I'm looking up the play again. To, well, while you're to refer- while you're looking, let me, let me tell you what I did today. I texted and spoke with eight. Oh people. Oh my god! Today. I just saw the injury again. Oh my god! Oh yeah. man, that was a little dirty. I mean, it was a little. It was a little dirty. I don't know if it was like super super dirty. It was. I don't know. It, so the, the it, best oh way god, the, so the best way I could describe it, and, and I think like I said I texted eight people who played in Division One or NFL football. I, I didn't play past second grade. When I first saw it, I was like, eh, that looked weird. Well, I'm not I'm not qualified to say if it hits dirty or not, unless it's like what happened at Colorado to, to Travis Hunter. That was clearly dirty. This seemed like a football play, but a weird one. And Tyvis Powell, who played safety in the NFL for four years, said it best. He goes, I don't think it was dirty, maybe a little reckless, but definitely not dirty. And I think that was the appropriate way to put it. He he went low, but he goes, what are you supposed to do? You can't tackle these guys high. You get called a dirty player. If you lead with the head right. or, or try to hit high, and Nick Chubb's such a good running back, you can't take him down high. You have to go low. And it's unfortunate timing that as soon as Minka Fitzpatrick dove, Chubb had planted his leg and there was nowhere for the knee to go. Could he have aimed a little higher? Sure, but in the heat of the moment when you're trying to make a tackle, you're not exactly thinking of where you're launching and what your target point is when everyone's moving so fast. So I was just curious if you had spoke to anyone, that was kind of the consensus we got from the players we I- spoke to. Honestly, show. all of our all of our conversations that we had after the game, no one even brought up the idea of oh, was that a dirty play? Fair. That that probably answers the question right there. That probably answers the question. But it, it is it is worth at least looking into. I don't know what the numbers are. Have the number of ACLs and knee ligament injuries gone up? since the NFL has changed the emphasis on don't hit guys in the head. Has that spun the other way? I mean, cause yeah. it, it's, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are, but it'd be interesting to look at this because if there is a big correlation, then that's something that the NFL will probably have to look into. Not necessarily revert have, back to the old. Sorry, huh? I mean, to cut you off, but I was saying you have a research team at CBS that could definitely look that up. I don't have that manpower here at the ultimate Cleveland sports show, but Frank, if you get those numbers, send them to me and I'll give you credit on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 We'll have to look into it. I, I I honestly don't believe there's a there's a true correlation. It just feels like that the mm-hmm. I mean it feels like every year that there's a ton of injuries, ACLs, Achilles, whatever. But it feels like it I, it just feels like with Rodgers and Dobbins and Chubb, like three really prominent focal point players of teams going down. You know, within the first game and a half of the season, it um it's, it's definitely a little. It's definitely a little. I mean, I mean, again, this happens every year. It just when you're in the moment, it feels maybe worse than it is in the grand scheme of things. But so the Browns fans feel like the season's over. Or where where are Browns fans right now? You told me they were thinking Super Bowl after week one. Where are they now after week two? Yeah, I mean, I, I think this city more than any other city I've been in. You know, what? I take that back. I take that back. Every city I've been in that is built around football, Cleveland and College Station. The swings that fans could have week to week were way out of proportion, good and bad. If they win a game that they weren't supposed to win or they look better than expected, it's national championship. This is the year the Aggies make the college football playoff in Cleveland. They beat Cincinnati in dominant fashion. They have owned Cincinnati in the past, and it was a bad weather game where the defense looked phenomenal. We overlooked some of the Browns' offensive woes because they won the game. So it was all all hands on deck. This is a legitimate playoff Super Bowl contender. This team finally has the makings to compete with Jackson with uh with Kansas City, excuse me, with Cincinnati, the other top teams in the in the AFC, Buffalo. And then after last night's game, a, a lot of that wind got taken out of the cell. I think tomorrow will be a better indicator of how the, the city really feels about this team. It's just tough after the Nick Chubb injury to get a good read because everyone kind of felt that gut punch at once, but I know today on the or tomorrow on the show, one of the topics we will be discussing is is the season over or do you think it's salvageable? In my personal opinion, I think this defense is good enough to be a playoff team, and it comes down to Deshaun Watson. You can lose a star running back if you have a top tier quarterback. If you don't and you don't have a quality running game, no matter how good your defense is, your ceiling at best is nine and eight and making a wild card. So it's gonna come down to Deshaun Watson. And they traded 
three first round draft picks and fully guaranteed his contract because they thought he was a guy who could lead them to the promised land from that quarterback position, something the city hasn't had, frankly, since it returned to Cleveland in 1999. I'm still hopeful. It hasn't been good so far, but it all comes down on the shoulders of Deshaun Watson now. And if you're hoping on if you're hoping on the Deshaun Watson resurgence, it's not happening. So if that's what you're hanging your head on, then I wouldn't be hanging my head pretty much on anything because he's in my opinion, he's washed. And why he may real have, quick, why, why are you so confident that it won't come back at all? That the Deshaun Watson we saw in Houston is gone for good. I just feel like when you see a guy who missed time then comes back, like there's a moment, at least a glimpse of something to hang your hat on last year. I didn't see a single thing from Deshaun Watson last year that made me believe, oh, wow, he still has it. Yeah. So far through two games this season, I've seen nothing. He looks yeah, slow. No, that's, that's fair. He looks slow. He his, Something's off with his with the forward pass that he's throwing. He's, like, missing guys that he should be hitting that are open down the field. Um, I just, it, he just He just looks like a, a washed football player. Um, I, yeah. Obviously, I take, take him over, over Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. but – I just don't think that if you're if you believe that you know Deshaun Watson's the guy to take you to the playoffs, then I don't I don't I just don't think he's that guy anymore. Uh, he was he's great. He's been with objectively a- terrible, like objectively bad, not just kind of bad, but like bad, bad. I'm not willing to sell all my Watson stock yet because I do believe that there is a way to to unlock that 2020 version of himself. Physically, I still think he shows flashes. I think it's more mental, Frank, where he he sees things but he's not trusting his eyes yet. And there was a play in the first quarter yesterday, Aikman called it out and Tyvis broke it down for us today where Elijah Moore on the right sideline ran a outbreaking about 15 yard out, out route. And if Watson plants his back foot and lets it rip, has time to make that throw. He double clutches, hesitates by a split second. And that allows Joey Porter to catch up incomplete pass. No big deal. You know, third and long, they just punt. But it's those little things where he's capable of making the throw. He's just not trusting what he's seeing yet. And I think he's going to have to have a big game to build that self-confidence back up to where he can just trust his eyes. But I'll tell you, as you know, I'm a basketball player. I'm going to compare this to shooting. Every time you keep missing threes, Frank, you get a little less confident, a little less confident, a little less confident. And you need to see them go through before you build that internal confidence back up. He needs a big game. But I think... In his own mind, with each poor performance, he gets a little further and further away from being able to believe in believe in himself. I, I mean, I, I've never like played any of those at a at an elite level, so it's hard for me to say whether. So I'm just looking at. I mean, looking at his game log, but I think I think throwing a forward pass and and shooting a basketball like it's so much, it's so much more simple. I feel like to complete a forward pass than it is to shoot a basketball because that's like all about form and whatnot. Like football, you just got like hit the target. I don't know. I guess they're similar, but doesn't I feel like they're just two different things. But just looking at his game log, like, like he no, there's no, there, no there's no 300 yard passing games last year. He had a three nope. TD no pick game against Washington, but that was a meaningless game where he only completed 50 percent of his passes and threw over 169 yards. So it's kind of a deceiving stat line. He played a great uh, half and a terrible second half, by the way. And then so far this year, 235, 154. He's never he yet he has yet to throw for 300 yards. He has one game with three touchdown passes. It's just a snap. He, he hasn't been good. He, he hasn't not, been good, man. Hasn't been not, good. Not uh, His QBR is 29.3 this year, which is, I mean, that does not sound good at all. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just, similar to Zach Wilson, I just I just don't see, I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel right now for, for Deshaun Watson. As for the Jets, still sort of processing what happened to Aaron Rodgers four plays in. It's just crazy. After all yeah. the hype, after all the yeah. buildup, after a month of hard knocks, mm-hmm. after you know speculation about retirement and what's the future hold for Aaron Rodgers, he twists teams, and in the blink of an eye, it's it's over, it's done. I just, it's the most same it old sucks. Jets thing ever. S- similar to Vinny Testaverde in Week One of '99, after the Jets had made the AFC Championship game, there I believe I I heard. Uh, on a podcast or on the radio that they were the preseason favorites to win the Super Bowl going into the 1999 season. And week one, Vinny Tessifredi drops back to pass or drops back to hand the ball off and tears his Achilles while handing the ball off to Curtis Martin season over. And yeah, just like that. Oof. I, I, It just it never even felt real that he was a Jet. And I needed to like make it through a game to know that it was real. 
Um, but it's just how many episodes just, of the Hard Knocks are there? Is it four? I think it's four or five. So there's a chance that he was in more episodes of Hard Knocks with the Jets than he played total snaps. Well, he, well, yeah, we'll see what happens if he with how he's able to come back either for the playoffs this year. But by the way, I have whatever. So Dr. Neil Elatroch is his name. He just in the past week he's done surgeries on Aaron Rodgers' Achilles and Shohei Otani's elbow. So like. I guess I don't know what happened to Dr. James Andrews, but I mean, he he's retired. Out. He's out. But Dr. Neil Ella Troch is he? He must live in the nicest house in in Los Angeles because he he gets all the big names. They all go to him. He 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 is dominating his field, unlike any other person maybe that we've seen in any industry right now. Every he's major athlete go- goes out to Dr. Neil Ella Troch. He must live an unbelievable life. It's it's amazing, like. How he just got all these openings. Whenever an athlete goes down, first flight to LA, and Dr. Neil Elatrach is sitting there waiting for him. Um, pretty it must it's be a, a a pretty good life for him. Uh, but by the but speaking of Dr. Neil Elatrach, he apparently performed this innovative surgery in Rogers, where he's talking about returning in January if that could, if that turns out to be the case. But the Jets, there's no chance the Jets make the playoffs. But there's a possibility, I guess, that because of this innovative surgery for a torn Achilles, Rogers can be back in. Four months time, which seems I don't believe it abs- at all. Absolutely preposterous. I, I just like I, I. It's just crazy because usually in Achilles' year, obviously we saw Cam Makers return in like six months, which was a a major outlier. But a four he months for an back. Achilles, he's insane. old too. Like he's old, man. Aaron Rodgers is what thirty nine. I believe he's thirty nine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the body just doesn't recover the same. That's why when Nick Chubb, when he tore his knee up in Georgia. Equally as devastating. He was he was 21 years old. Body's just different, man, when you're younger. And as you get older, it gets harder and harder to recover. The only running back we've ever seen recover from an injury like that at that late in his career was Adrian Peterson. So the numbers and the chances of it happening for Chubb, uh, slim. If anyone could do it, it's him. And I feel kind of the same way with Rodgers in a weird way. I don't think he'll come back this season, but it wouldn't shock me to see him back to full form next year. But it's – I do I, I, no, wouldn't but it be like awesome? I, this, this, wouldn't it this be is right, this... real quick, real quick? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could go through a football season with injuries off and we just got to see the teams at their best, like all season long, 17 games, find out who the real best team is, not who's the healthiest team at the end of the season. Like imagine that utopia world. I don't I so don't fun. think I, I don't think it you it's it's not it's not a survival of the fittest thing. Like usually before the season. Like you can, you know who the final four to six teams are. It's, it's, that's, I mean, that's what it comes down to. In the AFC, it's between the Chiefs, Bengals, Bills, and Ravens. Those, I mean, maybe the Dolphins, five. I mean, I but, picked, I picked the Ravens to miss the playoffs. So who knows about Tua? And then the NFC, it's the Cowboys, the Eagles, Niners, and the Niners. And that's pretty much yeah. it. So yeah. there's eight teams, I think, that have a realistic chance to win the Super Bowl. Did you think the Jets had a realistic chance to win the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers? I mean, yeah, I did. I thought. So you've been you you it, got it, robbed this year, just like Cleveland fans feel like they got robbed. But but like this like is the, this is the same thing as like the Dirk Kyrie and and Harden getting hurt in the playoffs for the Nets. Like this was the opportunity for the Jets. Mm-hmm. That was their that was their opportunity. That was the opportunity for the Nets in twenty one. The injuries happened, and it was never the same again because all their circumstances end up factoring in that you don't foresee coming, and when the opportunity is there. You have to capitalize. If you don't capitalize, you may never get another chance again. And it's it's just disheartening because the the chips were aligned. Like Joe Burrow and the Bengals, like Burrow just reaggravated his cap. This probably be a lingering thing the entire season. The Chiefs yeah. have Kelsey, not looked I mean, like the Chiefs Kelsey's have not looked played, like world beaters. Yeah, well, Kelsey's back, hurt. but the Chiefs have not looked like real world beaters so far in the first couple of weeks. Especially with you know with their receiver situation, Kelsey's not being hundred percent. I mean, they just scored seventeen points and, lo- and to, to barely beat the Jaguars, and they they lost to the Lions. So the Chiefs look. My vulnerable. big point here, Frank, with injuries and, and just why they suck and why is a fan of a team or someone who but covers I, a team that needs them to be good. The NFL this year seems as wide open as it seemed in a long, long time. You can tell me that the Chiefs still have Patrick Mahomes. I get it. They have serious question marks at receiver. I don't love Dak Prescott. Brock Purdy still needs to prove it to me before I'm willing to just say pencil the Niners into the for, into the Super Bowl. The Eagles 
haven't looked great through two weeks. They're 2-0, and but they haven't looked like world beaters yet. This season felt more open to me than before because of the quality of teams that may not be 1-2, the Bills. I mean, the Jets just beat the Bills without Aaron Rodgers. Like, but the Jets beat the Bills with that with Zach Wilson last year too. So like, but, the Bills, I'm, I'm, but that's that's my point. This year, it felt more wide open. And two weeks into the season, we've seen two teams in my mind that were on the probably not Super Bowl contenders, but legitimate playoff contender list: the Browns and the Jets, fall off that list because of debilitating injuries to their franchise's biggest star. Is that that's all I'm saying? And that's why it sucks. That's why it'd be fun because it. I, it's okay. Let, let, let me bring it to the producer head real quick. Frank, imagine you were in my show in Cleveland, right? I had a topic ready for today, assuming the Browns had won, because I thought they were going to kill the Steelers. Minus no major injuries. I mean, would you? Yeah, okay. Would you? No, 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 no. But I'm saying, like before, right, today, I was planning ahead. a rundown. Yeah. So assuming no one got hurt, assuming they won. If I gave you the choice, would you rather fast forward to the playoffs? and skip the next 15 games and have your team healthy for the playoffs, but you don't get to enjoy the playoffs. You don't get to enjoy the regular season. You don't get to enjoy any other wins. You just go to the playoffs right now. Or because this is the best Browns team you've had in in maybe 30 years, do you want to play those 15 games and enjoy it? Like, what would you rather have done, assuming the Browns had won on Monday night? In hindsight, obviously. And I get to play those games and, and injuries are off the table? No, you, that, that's the risk. You have to play oh, those games. Oh, then I'm going games. right to the playoffs. Okay, now we that's talked a, about this one pre-show an meeting, answer. and we had a, a 2-2 split on the show because some Browns fans haven't had a chance to enjoy a That's a, that's a preposterous take. Hang on, that's, a, that's just wrong because so much can go wrong. When you're clicking, you want to go Listen, to the playoffs right I'm, now. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what the guys on my show thought today. Now, this didn't happen because they lost. They lost Nick Chubb. It was null and void. I'm just saying that was a question I had asked. If you were the Jets, you would fast-forward – Assuming Aaron Rodgers didn't get hurt against Buffalo, assuming they beat Dallas, you're on cloud nine. You think this team has a chance to go 13 and four, 14 and three. You would skip all the joy of regular season, a successful There's no joy in the regular, regular season, season with Mike. Like there are some moments there that is, are good. See, but... Frank, I can't ask you this because you're a, a, a rotten fan. Like you don't get joy at anything <laughs> but championships. And, and that's, I guess that's kind of my point. It depends on where you're coming from. I'm with you. Take me to the playoffs healthy and let me win a title. Like, to me, that's all that matters. But to a lot of people, there is legitimate joy out of having four months where this city's buzzing, where they wake up every morning and they don't say, my football team's won one game in the last two seasons. It just sucks. The, the sitting on eggshells and the, the not necessarily the fear, but, like, knowing in the back of your head that at any moment someone could get tackled weird, someone could misstep, someone could – you know, get hit weird, and like, and and in the snap of the finger, all that hope, all that positivity is gone. And like, if you have the ability to just get to the games that really matter and not risk anyone getting hurt, and because like, there's no, the yeah, the regular season rides are fun, Mike, but like, the playoff runs are the journeys as a fan that stand the test of time. Like, I will never forget, as long as I live, the Jets playoff runs in 09 and ten. Like, those are with me forever. The Yankees World Series title in 09, like, the one that was most mature to watch. I, like, cherish every moment of that run. Like, mm-hmm. regular, the regular season moments are cool. Like, Domingo Hermont's perfect game. Couldn't care less. It was a nice moment when it happened. Now, I, like, almost wish it didn't happen. Like, yeah. I just, the the regular season moments like I said, are nice, but in the grand scheme of things, it's all about the playoffs. And anyone who says otherwise, like, we, who are you? You're a fan of a team who's won one playoff game in 40 years, Frank. That, that, that's who you are. Yeah, I live for the regular season. So, go, no. You want to go to the playoffs and you want to win playoff games. Just, like I said, that's I'm, an easy I, answer. I didn't answer. It's a, loser, I was it's tell, a loser's mentality. You what? What, what would you choose? been a losing city for 40 what would you years, Frank. What would you it's choose? The, Oh, I want a championship. I've won, I've as a Giants fan, I've won two championships. There's no regular season game cum- cumulative cumulative yeah. cumulative that would equal one of those Super Bowls. If you would tell me I had a healthy team for the playoffs, take me there tomorrow. Screw the 15 games. Once again, I've witnessed my team win two Super Bowls. I asked a group of people who have watched their team win one playoff game in 40 years. 
who sat through an 0-16 season and then a 1-15 season and still sold out the stadium every single time. Like, it's just, I think it depends on what you've already experienced in your life. So, and we had a 2-2 split. So not all of them feel that way, but it's 2-2 split. Interesting. Anyway, so the Jets are in a sort of a predicament here because Zach Walsh is clearly not the guy. Much like Deshaun Walsh, as, as Browns fans, I guess, are trying to convince themselves that Deshaun Watson could be the guy. It is blatantly obvious that Zach Wilson is not the guy and will never be the guy and has no hope of ever turning his career around because he is absolute trash. That being said, there's two avenues the Jets could go. I almost wish they would have lost to the Bills in week one because then now they would be 0-2 and, and we would be Complete full fire. Caleb Williams mode. Yeah. But instead, they're 1-1 one and one and there's still a possibility that they could like eke in but so the question is would you rather go on this ride with Zach Wilson well your ceiling is probably five or six wins and the probably the 11th or 12th pick in the draft but I almost rather it be worse than him not be able to win any games but the Jets are too talented that they'll they'll eke out some wins which is unfortunate because when you don't have a when you're in this situation just tanking for the quarterback Caleb Williams is like is the situation and the route I'd rather go, but it's just not going to happen. So it's not realistic. Jets are a five or six win football team. Zach Wilson, a quarterback, but they can up at that best. number by at best. They can up that number by. If on a scale one to ten, what are the chances Brady comes out of retirement? One being no chance, ten being he's coming back tomorrow. Wait, say say that one more time. What what chance do you give? Tom Brady to come out of retirement and play for the Jets. Zero. Okay. So Tom Brady is not coming. No. If you're the Jets, would you trade for Kirk Cousins? Yes. Does that, that interest you? Yes. So Kirk Cousins is fascinating. I just don't know. I don't think he doesn't make the Jets a Super Bowl team, which is why I sort of lean against it. We we have said before the season, and I and I don't keep I don't intentionally keep bringing this back to the Browns, but I thought the Jets and the Browns this year were in very similar situations. Potentially very good defenses, which we've seen through two weeks, has been proven true. Weapons that offensively can make a bad quarterback look decent. Garrett Wilson, regardless of who's throwing the ball, is an elite, elite talent. Oh, I, the, I, the Browns six to to sorry, wait, hang on. Six total touches for Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson in the game can never happen. Agreed. That's got to be a, a minimum minimum 20. Minimum uh, yeah, 20. Yeah, like, uh, listen, listen I'm, I'm with you. The question was, was Aaron Rodgers over the hill and was Deshaun Watson able to get back? And now you're looking at a situation where, at least on the Jets' perspective, you know your defense is elite. You know you have two legitimate playmakers in Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, on top of some other guys who I, I like. You know, Dalvin Cook can still play a little bit. I still think the rest of the receivers are competent. Lazard, uh, Hardman. Has Hardman even played yet? He's gotten in games, yeah. Yeah, I mean – he hasn't done much, but but they have other guys. This is a defense in a wide open AFC that I do think is good enough to hold them in any game. Is Kirk Cousins a Super Bowl winning quarterback? No, but I don't think you can punt on a season this early into the season without giving yourself at least a chance to compete. And Kirk Cousins gives you a chance to compete. I don't think he's the end all be all answer. It's a, he's on a one year deal, so you don't have to worry about. Resigning him if you want to let him walk, he could walk, whatever. But you can't let this defense go to waste for 15 more games. It is too good. It'd be a disservice to every Jets fan and player in that locker room if they don't at least make an attempt to upgrade the quarterback position. Yeah. Cousins of all the possibilities. The other possibilities would be Carson Wentz. No. But who wants to go down that road? Matt Ryan and Joe Flacco are to me immediate cross off. No. So anyone anyone who brings up those guys doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, Cousins does definitely does give the, the team the best chance to win. So we'll see what direction they go here and how much the Broncos, sorry, the Vikings keep falling with Cousins because much like Deshaun Watson, Kirk Cousins is trash. Uh, so to college football, we'll start with the Travis Hunter play, Henry Blackburn. I was so angry when the play happened. It was such a cheap <laughs> shot. I don't yeah. condone the death threats the dude's been getting, but I was so was mad. Dirty play. When that, dirty play. I was so That's mad when the objectively play, dirty. I was so mad when the play happened because you could see immediately Travis Hunter knew that something was wrong because he was on the ground, like smashing the ground in pain. And now he's going to be at three games. And, and not that all of Colorado's season was 
contingent on the health of Travis Hunter, but as you outlined earlier in earlier episodes, you know, they just don't have the depth to overcome an injury to a player of the caliber of Travis Hunter. And now they're 21 point underdogs against Oregon. And they, if he was healthy, I'd be like, because of literally because of Travis Hunter, I'd be like, they could be anyone in the country, but now unless Shador puts out, pulls some major, major magic and their offense can just continues to light it up. I just don't know if they can hang with teams like Oregon and USC. So I expect them to be three and two, which is unfortunate yeah. because I, th- I thought this Colorado team had a real chance to do something big this year, and now, now not so much. But it's been it's been an awesome ride, and I love Shador talking about Brady mode, like that. Just, like I almost like want to like tank for Shador. Like give give me Shador in the Jets. That dude has the mentality. He has the moxie. He's got the ability, and I take that dude as my quarterback any day of the week. Yeah, I'm I'm more. I really wanted Colorado to beat the ever living poop out of. Colorado State, so then I could bet the house on Oregon this week to absolutely blow the doors off. It didn't happen. The line is not as high as I would have wanted to bet on. I'm still going to bet Oregon, but uh, minus yeah, 21. Yeah, I, I want. Yeah, it, it's high. I'm still going to bet them. I, I do think they absolutely destroy. Um, just listen. It's what I said earlier. They without Travis Hunter, their weapons are and eh, Sanders is legit. Like that dude could ball. I don't care. FCS, Pac-12, SEC, ACC, that dude is a flat-out baller, and he's going to be playing on Sundays in the very near future. I just don't think their line, offensively or defensively, can compete with Oregon. So I am uh, taking the Ducks in that one. But I wish I wish Colorado had beaten Colorado State by 50 because the Buffalo hype train would have been so out of control. It would have been like a seven-point line, Frank, and that would have been easy, guaranteed, bet-the-house type money. So... You you think you think that line would have been as low as seven? I don't know how low it would have been, but uh, it wouldn't have been twenty one. I'll tell you that. If Travis Hunter was healthy. What's the line? It, do, they, do they win last week the same way they they win? But Hunter's just healthy. That's the only difference. Yeah. 17? Sixteen and a half. Seventeen and a half. I don't know. They they stunned the world before. I honestly haven't seen enough of Oregon this year to say how truly good they are. Obviously, they have Bo Nix, a quarterback who feels like he's been playing college football for the last 10 years. Kind of like, kind of like, was there the Renf- first year I got to AM? <laughs> he's been in college football forever. Yeah. He literally, like, I mean, is, he, is this yeah. his last year of eligibility? How many more years of college football is Bo Nix going to be playing? It's ridiculous. 30. He, I think there's just a the rule where he can play as long as he wants. He could be 45 as a quarterback of an ACC school. He has to play in all five power conferences. All right. That will do it. For this edition of the Lucas Lucas podcast, hopefully no, Yankees we'll be talk. Back. You, you What's there to say about the Yankees? <laughs> I, by the way, the only thing I have to say about the Yankees is why can why can Shohei Otani get an elbow procedure where he's definitely hitting opening day of next year? And Jason Dominguez has elbow surgery and he's out nine to ten months and probably not coming back to the All Star break next year. How was there a discrepancy like that? I was I saw that like they Otani under had a surgery and he's not going to pitch next year, but he's opening day he'll be ready to hit. Jason Dominguez having basically a similar operation and. Nine to ten month recovery. Call gotta go that. see that. Gotta go see the specialist. Gotta. Why go to can't that. the Yankees and Jason Dominguez get in with Doctor Neil Elatrosh? <laughs> hey, he's got the New York connection with Rogers, so make make the phone call. Uh, make the phone call, guys. Oh, I well, I love I love the Rogers interview on uh, McAfee. That made me feel a lot better. Just like seeing him like living and like happy. He was a good and... spirit. Yeah. The whole dolphin thing was weird, though. Let's be honest. Dolphin thing. He said he likes listening to the sound of dolphins having uh intercourse <laughs> I don't, uh, all right did you miss that part that was the that was the best part of the whole interview he said it's Susan. what i watched oh the whole God. thing i don't remember hearing that i'm sending the clip right now all right anyway that will do it for this edition of the lucas lucas podcast see you next week when the jets lose to the patriots again and they will not beat the patriots because bill belichick absolutely owns zach wilson it's one of the biggest mismatches in sports hammer the patriots